going to do this next St. Croix here. This one was the one that just had the guides pop out of the, the wraps that are on there now. So go ahead and get these old, old wraps off and then we'll put some new thread on there. So for this part, we're going to use a razor blade and a little bit of heat. So I like to use just a little bit of masking tape below and above the thread there just to protect the blank when I'm scraping, scraping the old thread off so we don't put any, any scratches on this blank that aren't already there. Our, our wraps there to protect the blank on both of these guides here. So what I'm going to do next, take a little bit of heat and apply it to the epoxy here. You don't want to do too much because you can burn and melt the blank, but you want to get enough where you can move that epoxy and get it flexible. You can kind of start to smell it when it starts getting hot enough to go ahead and remove there. A lot of the epoxy is already missing so we'll get that one started there take the razor blade and get the scrape scrape up see how that epoxy starts to flake off of there okay. once you get one end you can peel it and it'll all unravel itself Unwrapping the masking tape here, we got the, the last of the, the guide wraps off here, so we'll go ahead and just put a little little heat on this old glue here that's left behind, and then I can just scrape that down with my fingernail to get the, the last epoxy lines off of off of the blank there so we can get ready for some fresh fresh thread. Cleaned up here, ready to put the, the guides back on. So we'll go ahead and bring in our uh, our guide wrapping system. This is just a basic guide wrapping system from Mudhole Custom Tackle. Um, two colors here, we're just gonna use the, the blue. Um, puts a little tension on it with the tension rod and wraps it through so I can keep my thread nice and tight. So we'll go ahead and slide this on here. We'll get this guide straight on the blank and then we'll show you how to wrap a guide. I like to use electrical tape when I'm putting the, the guide on the blank. They make a million different tapes. They make some special little circular tubing that holds it on there, but I found that the electrical tape holds it to the blank as tight as possible, and when you're done you can just cut it off and move on to the next one. Line it up with the real seat there since it's the first first guide. It's pretty center, so we'll start wrapping it now. So you want the thread tight, but not too tight. So if you're using this style of system, you kind of want that tension rod angled right at the blank like that. If you apply too much pressure on the thread, it gets too tight and you can cause your blank to break when the uh, tension's put on, on the guide and goes into the blank itself. So we'll go ahead and start wrapping here. Put one in, come over, and we're gonna go ahead and put this over here and wrap the tag end under that piece itself. Have a little tool here along the way so I can push the thread back, keep it nice and compact so you have a nice clean wrap when you're done, no gaps. I'll wrap about five times and then go ahead and cut this tag end off of there. Nice sharp pair of scissors are important. 
important for this process. So I've got the thread all the way built up to my tape here, so I'm going to go ahead and peel this tape off and then I'll take the thread up almost to the end of the foot. I like to leave a little room there when I tie it off so the epoxy doesn't run up the blank when we get to get to putting the epoxy on to tighten up these wraps. Okay, so we got our thread almost up to the end of the foot here. So what I do is I take a piece of the same thread I'm wrapping with, just make a little loop there like that. I'll go ahead and I'll slide it under the foot, leaving the tag end with the loop facing the top of the rod there. And then I'll go ahead and I'll wrap over top of that loop to the end of the guide, and then we'll pull it through to finish, finish off. Important part here is keep tension on the thread coming from the foot. That way when you cut your thread coming off the spool, your guide doesn't unravel itself. So cut that there. I'm gonna make sure you put some tension on the other end of the, this tag end that we just cut. And then we'll go ahead and take that, put it through that loop, pull it tight here, take these two tag ends, Pull it down through. Now the wrap's finished. We'll go ahead and cut that off nice and close and then finish the thread up with this burnishing tool to get it all compact. All right, I've got the first guide wrapped here, so we're working on that second one that needs rewrapped, and I'm just trying to eyeball the guides to make sure they're center and that they're lined up with the, the other guides that are still on there. You can go ahead and move these guides around still before you go ahead and put the, the finishing epoxy on there. It's another reason why it's important not to wrap them too tight when you're wrapping with the thread. This is my, our drying motor here. We're about to start the, uh, the epoxy process. So go ahead and put the, the butt of the rod in there. And then we'll plug that in so it rotates the rod when we put the epoxy on so it dries evenly throughout the process. I have my two-part epoxy here. Uh, it's important to mix them both equally, so I'll go ahead and count that out. Put it into this little tin foil dish here. Go ahead and mix it with a little mixing stick. Let it sit for just a couple minutes to get all mixed up, and then we'll go ahead and start applying it to the thread on this rod. I usually just count out the seconds for each each part. Uh, you can buy syringes and mix them by the milliliter, but this seems to, to work for me. All right. It's important not to mix this too erratically. You kind of just want to have a slow motion if you go too crazy with it you'll start to get air bubbles in the epoxy itself which will translate onto your thread so just like to turn it get it all all in there and then just slowly go back and forth with the that mixing stick and get it mixed up and then I'll tilt the tin the other way to send all the epoxy down the other side, make sure it's evenly mixed together. We're going to go ahead and get our motor started here to get the, the rod spinning. I like to have it spinning towards me when I'm doing this process. It can go both ways. So we've got our epoxy here. I'll go ahead and get a good bit on the brush here. I want to start with it on there. And then I'll just go ahead and we'll start getting some on on the thread itself and then we'll work work on the uh, the edges and the details get those clean edges uh, kind of just let the motor 
do the work here for you when you're cleaning up the edges to get that nice clean edge hold that brush nice and steady in the same spot and the rod turns get that nice clean clean edge on the, the end of your thread all right I'm gonna ask Kevin to do two things at once um, as you're doing that Kevin's got a uh, John Boat downstairs with the Torquedo Cruise 10.0. You've been in a couple of my different videos showing off uh, showing off that rig. Tell me a little bit about your season you had with uh, Mr. Matt Elliott. Yeah, so Matt and I fish Metro Reservoir Anglers. Uh, you've probably seen the video that we did last year recapping our season. That was our first season fishing the Metro Series tournaments together and we won Angler of the Year all six tournaments and the uh, Electric Bass Angling National Champions this year. We had another good year. We won uh, Angler of the Year again in Metro and we won two of the six events this year. Finished second twice and then have a, had a fifth and an eighth place finish as well. So it was another Another successful year with Matt, and we enjoy competing in Metro together. What was your, the biggest fish you landed, or you guys, you know, collectively, what was the big, biggest one you brought to a weigh-in? I believe it was six, it was a little over six pounds, we caught it at the, uh, the last tournament at Pretty Boy. It was a crucial fish to help us wrap up that Angler of the Year title. What did it hit? Ate a jig. Nice. So, How deep? Uh, 20, 25 feet, I believe it was. So, so what's your <clears throat> what's your favorite rod for fishing a fishing a jig deep? Personally, I fish one of my custom rods. It's a seven three, either heavy or medium heavy and a half um, MHX custom custom bell rod by myself that I I like to fish jigs on and matt <clears throat> matt makes some really nice jigs what's uh what's your favorite jig is that he makes what's the what are the design features uh the last nighters are our special jigs um a lot a lot goes into that jig and it's just something that we both have have confidence in out on the water too secret to tell the full detail I guess <laughs> I'll leave that up to him yeah he wouldn't tell me he'd show me he wouldn't let me film it right I don't blame him not me either just using the lighter here to apply a little heat to the epoxy you don't want to get it too close and you don't want to hold it too long because it will burn the epoxy but this just take helps take any any air bubbles out that you may have gotten while brushing that epoxy on on that thread We're out here now. Uh, we're going to work on making a custom rod from scratch here. Uh, this is a 7.3 heavy blank that I have here. Uh, I have my wind grips that I like to, to run on the rod. As you can see, the finished rod here with the, the wind grips as well. Um, so what we're going to do is go ahead and ream those grips out to fit you want to ream them out almost to where you want to place them, but not quite. You still want them snug when you go ahead and place them on that on that blank. So we we'll go ahead and ream those insides out to get further down the blank. <laughs> 